So emergency call outs are charged at a premium because basically it's the, the factor of having to repack the, the van in the middle of a job normally and unpack and pack it at night time. So yeah, I'm packing and unpacking the van mainly. Um, unpacking it at night, packing it up from a job you might be on. Um, so that's, that's one part of it. First hour on site, out of hours, so this is an emergency call out, is 90 pounds or 88 pounds 50 it's actually what i charge that works out during weekdays as 110 pounds 50. that's the minimum charge for an emergency call out and that's what i'm going out on now and an emergency call out at weekends minimum charge works out at 149 pounds odd so if you said 110 pounds in the week, 150 pounds in the weekday, you wouldn't be far, in, in the weekend, it, you wouldn't be too far wrong. So I've got two rates for the initial hour on site. That's 60 pounds, which is the normal, and out of hours and weekends, best part of 90 pounds. Subsequent hours, weekdays, £38.50, out of hours, weekdays, £48.50, so nearly £50 out of hours. Weekends though, that's £58.50, so nearly paying £60 an hour at weekends. Not far from it now. 17 minutes into the journey. Not going to be very difficult this. The lady is um, a violin teacher. So I actually give her a, a labour discount. I give her a labour discount because she is a violin teacher. Don't know if that makes any sense. I should really charge her more for playing the violin, shouldn't I? Give her a discount if she's a viola player. I don't know what we'll do tonight. I've got some beer, which I'm in the middle of drinking. And some beer that I'm in the middle of drinking and quite fancy watching something but um, I'll probably have to do violin practice with my son. So here we are at the location just about. In second gear, up we go. She says my keypad is going nuts as long as it's not an alarm going off. And she's forgotten her pin number, so I think it's just a question of disconnecting the, uh, the system without, without the alarm going off. My wife was up here once and um, she parked along at, at the edge of the road and somebody from the other side of the road parked in the other side, just drove straight out of their drive into my wife's parked car on the other side of the road and smashed the, the, in, the door in. So here we are. Here we are at location.
Now, like I'd say, it's a, a security system. Um, um, I don't think she's going to be too keen on me filming in there. There's nothing to look at. So I'll nip in there, do what needs doing, hopefully, without any incident, and um, come back and tell you what transpired. Do they what? Do they like, do they appreciate it? Who? Your neighbours. The neighbours? No, they just rattle tins and stuff. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a bit, I'm a bit bitter about the NHS, but never mind. Right, so what we're looking at here is possibly, well, we're going to do a quote for coming out of there, where that light is there. Um, some point changing over to armoured cable down here taking the armoured cable along there this is 20 meters from there to there 15 actually it's 15 meters but we're looking at 15 meters along there changing over to armour somewhere down here taking the armour all the way along and putting a ip67 flood here warm white LED flood here and a warm white LED flood here shining up the building and working off a PIR so you can turn the PIR on so that you can turn it on permanently onto PIR or off at the same time we've got a uh, another flood going off the other side of the garage there uh, the other side of the garage there's a garden back there and cabling's already in there so it's not difficult I'll just do a quote for that the alarm problem was just the electricity had failed the MCB was off and it was beeping because there was, uh, there was um there was no power to the keypad so all that needs doing is reinstating power to the keypad in fact what i've done is i have um i've just i've taken the um plus dc line out of the keypad so the keypad's dead. She's not using it at the moment because she's got animals, so she's she's happy with that. And um, I mean, we'll have to look into quite why that thing had fused. And there's a there's a way all of all to itself for that. Um, I did forget to actually think it's an MK board. Um, that's something I haven't really in my head but so we've got possibly a bit of work out of that um, and it's nice work garden stuff I quite like lighting a house up but it's on a very small budget she hasn't got my last two quotes um, some reason that didn't come through to her um, the quote I gave her was 298 pounds 288 pounds to replace two floodlights and she's now changed that she changed into wanting wall washers because I mentioned wall washers the problem with floodlights is that they if they're too low down, they're at eye level and they shine into your eyes, don't they? They don't do a good job of lighting up what you're looking at because they're, they're glaring into your eyes. So your eyes adjust for the brightness of the light and plunge everything else into complete and utter pitch blackness. 
you just see the star of the light shining and and nothing it's actually lighting up it's just blinding you so that's the problem with floodlights at low level and that's why where people can afford it I like to get them right up high those trees that you saw in a couple of videos back that's a good place for them right up there in that middle bit north of Glasgow up in I don't know what it's called actually but it's called Creef this place we went to and my brother-in-law's brother and sister-in-law so the other part of the family were on holiday there but we went up to Creef to collect a lathe which was a big lathe for us um, Woodhouse and Mitchell Junior 70 it's 54 inch long bed and it swings 22 inches in the gap and it was in such lovely condition 1959-ish sort of vintage 1950s -y vintage um, it was bought new and installed in Kincardine power station it's not called Kincardine the power station that was there I can't remember what it is called um, but when the power station was closed so from the time the power station opened and they fitted out the machine shop to the time it closed that's where the lathe was then it went to a rifle manufacturer who built rifles but it only had a top speed of 450 rpm and this is the one I was going on I get a picture of it and put it down here not not the actual one that we bought because I've, I've got not a very good picture actually here's a picture of the one that we bought um, this is how we got it out of the workshop we were buying it from paid 750 pounds for it oh it's a lovely lovely machine and we drove it down to Cambridge after spending the night up there in a in a hotel and installed it in my bro brother-in-law's workshop um, so here we are back home here we are back home so we're just going just going to open the gate here we are back home open the gate I've got some beer to drink here got some beer on the go so that's good we'll go and get the van evening done I hope this will stitch together in some kind of a form of video Let's see if anyone's at home doesn't look like it doesn't look like it at all does it We're out for a walk probably Cheers. Oh, oh, this is quite interesting. This is, uh, my wife got me, it's about 1910. Leaded crystal glass, very low center of gravity. Well, the German war reparations meant that three uh, Imperator class liners of about 56,000 tons, the largest ships of the day, were spread out between uh, jo oh God, what she was called anyway she was three three she was just prior to the Queen Mary she she was given over to the White Star Line and the one you'll have heard of of course uh, was the Imperator 
the or emperor the imperator with a big eagle on the front which was taken off became Berengaria the the most popular Cunard liner pr prior to the Queen Mary in the 1920s she appears in F Scott Fitzgerald novels um, so she was the Berengaria Majestic was the name of the White Star liner that had been the SS Bismarck built for the Hamburg America line and never sailed for the Hamburg America line because after um, she was taken into custody um, after use, being used between America and France as troop transport I think she she was probably stuck in America in New York at the outbreak of the First World War much like the Normandy in the Second World War was stuck over in New York and never went back to France um, they were converting her into a troop ship before she keeled over at caught fire, keeled over because of all the water they poured on her and then they scrapped her at Pier 67 or wherever it was in New York. Anyway, the same thing happened in the First World War. The Cunard Line's Berengaria was the Imperator and the SS Bismarck became the Majestic and Berengaria the most popular liner and the Majestic was also very popular and they were gorgeously uh, um, uh, fitted out like the Aquitania, like the Olympic. Anyway, these glasses, having a low centre of gravity, the ship rolled, because the Queen Mary rolled like a pig as well, but she, later in the 50s, uh, had uh, dual Denny Brown stabilisers fitted. So there was quite a bit of rolling involved and as you can see with a modern wine glass what you get is a completely ridiculous design of complete top heaviness and utter weakness. Now these are Edinburgh Crystal, they're not particularly cheap, they're not expensive um, but they're not cheap and look at that and the weakness here, the design of that is awful and there's your 1910 still going strong after 110 years uh, beautiful glass I mean I think these are still leaded crystal I love your comments and keep them coming uh, we'll see what we can do about the uh, workshop tour and, and a bit on the lathes there um, as I've introduced um, a couple of pictures during this video for those who are interested but the analytics of the videos does show that it's a it's a bit of it's a lower it's a lower interest in in the machine tool side than the sparking side so I um, have to think carefully about what we do there but um, yeah see you next time cheers <laughs>